right back. From the difference is. <laughs> from the difference is doing it. Still cracks me up every time. And look, this time, I am back with the long-awaited and much-anticipated return of our other basement disc dyer series. Yeah. Wait, I did that all wrong. Other basement disc dyers. <laughs> I love that graphic, Josh. You are the man. Okay, in this edition of Other Basement and Disairs, we will be featuring like a real rock star on the disc dying scene. And like, I'm not gonna pretend because it's all in the title and all over the thumbnail, I'm not gonna pretend like it's a secret or a surprise, but I am totally stoked to be saying the words featuring Jory of Jory's Fly Dies. Yeah! Now, some of you may recognize that name because it's just a name that you should recognize. The rest of you might remember him from our Disc Dyers of Ledgestone video that I did a few months back, where when I went out there, I was able to snag this puppy from my own bag from a dude who was out there representing for him. Jory, like, he's just such a total dude. And frankly, like, a super talented artist. You can see a reel of his discs starting up here over my super high-tech microphone that all obviously speak for themselves. But if I may, hot damn, that is some sexy plastic. He's really etched out his own signature style that jumps right off the feed as you're scrolling and swiping through it all. And you know, I could ramble on about the resume that he's built for himself in our community. Like, like being on the short list of dyers working with Huck Labs or doing a clinic with infinite discs on dying at the at the big disc golf convention coming up in vegas real soon but frankly i like i already told you all the important parts he's a total dude and a super talented artist and he's here to pull back the curtain and you know to walk all of us through not just one but two of his signature designs which that is why i also said earlier I'm totally stoked right Okay, one quick thing before we start banging on the tutorial. Look, even though it's been on a hiatus for a little while, Other Basement Disc Dyers is about to start coming back like on and popping. I just lined up like another artist this past week who like we can't call a newcomer anymore. She's not up and coming. Her stuff is just way too clean and way too good. And I'm gonna say it, she's officially graduated into rock star status, okay? And we're still working on something with the guys over at Lucky Dies and Daddy Mac Dies. I don't need to tell you who those guys are, rock stars. Anyways, the train is back on the tracks. That's what I'm trying to say. Here's the other thing I'm trying to say. I want more, I need more, give me more. It's crazy, like our little disc dying niche, it really has blossomed into a full blown nook at this point. <laughs> Is that what comes next after niche? Anyway, like there are, I mean, there are so many hawkers out there dying their own discs now. And like, just like Jory, like some really talented artists whipping up some white hot plastic, which like, if you're one of those, okay? And look, when you know, you know, okay? You know when you know, when you know. And if you don't know, here's how you know. When you're pulling out discs that are like, then you know. <laughs> Look, and I know that I've used that clip before, okay? But those might be my favorite three seconds in cinema history, so chances are you're gonna see it again. <laughs> so if, if you're one of those, okay? And just like Jory, you're a total dude. Or like Kateri and, and Tiffany, you're a total dudette. And, and you got an itch that you need to scratch to share some of your stylings and secrets with the rest of us out there in the teed in the army. Don't wait for me to hit you up. Okay. <laughs> Shoot me a line. Send up a flip. Hit all the buttons and do the things. Okay. And let's make some doing it happen because I want more. I need more. Give me more. All right. That's enough of all the blabber for now. That's not what any of us came here for. Let's upshift this thing into doing it mode. 
led by our guest instructor, Jory of Jory's Fly Dyes, as he walks and talks us through his methods for making some righteous designs in clear glue beds. And then I'll circle back for some quick goodbyes on the other side. All right, strap in, kids. It's doing it time. Hello and welcome. My name is Jory. I'm the owner and operator of Jory's Fly Dyes. And today I would like to go over a few different tips and tricks on how I create a lot of the dyes that you see on my Instagram and Facebook. I'm gonna go over materials and items you might need or that I use to create the images and uh, different patterns and styles that I uh, use quite a bit on a day-to-day -day basis. First off, these are what I would call my manipulators. Um, they allow me to lay down the actual colors that you see in the beds and manipulate the surface of the bed to get the desired effect that I like. I use these pipettes I get off Amazon. Toothpicks, those are my main jam for creating the swirls and spindles that you see in a lot of my work. Q-tips, I use those for more for shaving cream beds, but they can also be used in clear glue beds to get different effect than toothpicks. And then I'll take a pipette, cut the end off of it, and shorten it up a bit to create a straw for uh, blowing or manipulating with air. Uh, and I also use this bamboo straw to do something similar. When it comes to the actual colors, there are a few different things that I use or mixtures that I use. One of the main ones is Quick Coat Worm Dip. This is di uh, worm dip and not lure dip, so do not get confused with that when you go to order any. It's an acetone based uh, dye used for fishing lures, but also works on a lot of the plastics that discs are made out of. That by itself works really well. I do like to complement that or enhance that with the Pro Chemical and Dye colors. Um, you can find that on their website. They have every color under the sun essentially. Um, I dye poly works as well. Make sure it's the poly kind. Otherwise it may not take to the disc. And you can mix this directly with acetone or even denatured alcohol to create these different bottles of color that you see on my desk there. I would never mix denatured alcohol and acetone. I would keep those two types separate. The denatured alcohol is usually done for spin dyes or hand painting, things like that, whereas the acetone is used for the clear glue beds. So in getting started, I would just like to let you know a couple more things about the tools that I use. I use a standard 9-inch cake pan. I get these at Walmart for about $1.50 a piece. They work great non-stick so I can reuse them quite a bit before they actually um, get ruined by the glue or the chemicals that I use. I prefer the, um, the consistency of the colorations school glue. It's fairly cheap and I actually reuse this glue over and over again. I'll, uh, I'll show some examples of reusing that glue. To get started, I pour in a generous amount of glue, usually about um, at least a quarter inch thick to about a half inch thick, depending on how domey the disc is. The more dome on the disc, the deeper the glue. You can etch a little mark in your pans on where that would be. It's also really good to have a torch to help with a few different aspects of it. First off is popping bubbles. Very quickly and lightly, you don't wanna hold it over the, the flame too long at all. Um, it can actually burn the glue. Next, I will pipe that color into the pan in a very generous, uh, amount or a liberal amount. Choose your color pattern beforehand before you jump into it. That can really help. To do the dark wave or the dark swirl, um, people call it a few different things, I usually pour or drip a bit of the color into one spot. Um, for the black or the dark swirl, um, I'll do that in one big spot. Kind of like that. And then dance with the colors around that, uh, just depending on kind of effect I would like. How quickly you do this can determine how uh, defined the line is between the two colors. If you do it real quick, the colors actually start to blend a little bit and you get a, a hazy stardust look to them, uh, which I, I really like that in a lot of my designs. Sometimes I want a more defined edge, so you let it dry just a bit or evaporate just a bit, and you can see the colors kind of form a hard a hard line between the two. And if you want them to blend, you would just strip the color, you know, maybe an inch or so into the next one. Sometimes you have to work kind of quickly with it, depending on what kind of effect you would like. 
It's actually fairly quick for the whole process. Now I let it air out just a bit. Make sure you have good ventilation in the space that you're using to create these. A fan and an open window can really help with that. There are vapors that come off of the acetone naturally. I let that air out for just a bit, fan it. You can blow on it and actually see the liquid start to evaporate. And then at this point, make sure um, you're safe distance from all of your other open containers or close them um, if you don't have a lot of space. You want to be safe about if you're going to use any open flame. I do recommend using a torch to get rid of any remaining acetone so that it doesn't eat through the plastic of the disc. And there's just a little bit left on this bed. Um, most of it evaporated before I got the torch out, which is good because there are no large open flames to worry about. These dyes are heat reactive, so a lot of them need heat to really get the, the colors to show more vibrantly. And a torch, I believe, helps with that. So next, we'll take the a straw or the pipette that I've cut down to use as a straw and blow some, some swirls in there. And I use this usually to create a general idea of what I want to go on with the design. And it also sometimes can create some negative space, some pockets. And then I'll move to a more fine-tuned instrument like a toothpick. And I'm kind of dragging the colors into the swirl. It gives it some really good streaking and some really cool defined lines. I'm bringing that yellow into the swirl as well. Um, that's going to give it a little bit more dimension. So when the viewer is looking at the disc, they're going to see those colors really starting to come together. Now I have like three colors swirling right here. Yellow, uh, the black, and the pink. This blue comes around over here, mixing into the purple and that's going to be brought up into this rule as well. Um, and then on the back side here is where I do my little spindles. Um, kind of bring those fingerlings out. Bring them out into the other colors and this creates a very similar effect to dragging everything else through uh, but in a different direction. It was actually really came together really quickly. So next is getting the disc into the glue. This is a Discomania Razor Claw 2. And so anything that comes from Sweden, especially, I use a magic eraser and I just lightly go over the disc. I want to get every bit of the surface of that disc. I do this on every disc that I dye because some companies use a release agent that sticks to the disc and can stop the dye from penetrating totally and sometimes it's really sad when it happens especially if you made a great bed you'll notice this disc is a pink color but it's a premium plastic so if you go through your T Diddy resources you'll find the chart that shows um, what plastics take color and what don't good rule of thumb is anything premium will take pretty well so then I grab the disc with my hands like that, I hold it tightly. And this is where you might want to practice. Take a clear disc and work on laying it into the glue so you avoid any bubbles. You can do that over and over and over with a clear disc with clear glue and watch where the bubbles form. When you learn how to get good at it, you don't have to worry about it unless you're doing like a Berg or a Puddle Top disc. I make sure to orient my disc in a way that works with the design if there is a, an orientation to the design and to the stamp. And set it in softly and you kind of roll it in from one edge to the other and then I try to push it down to where the flashing would be on the disc where the two mold pieces come together where you can see that and that'll give you full surface area coverage on the disc. 
That disc is ready. Um, I let it sit for 24 hours on most premium plastics. Um, if it's champion style or clear plastics, I do anywhere from 36 to 48 hours just depending on the stiffness and how clear it is. After each glue bed, I pour the glue back into the jugs and reuse it. This helps me save money on costs for glue. It also keeps more glue available to everyone else. The glue itself does come out a little bit purple or what other colors you might have been using with it. This doesn't really affect the disc very much. I actually tested it with a white disc before and it came out a very, very mild pink. What's happening is when we lay dye down, it's very similar to a hydro dip, and it's just the surface area of the glue that's holding the dye. And so most of that dye goes into the disc, and then a little bit's left over. Um, we pour that into the glue, it all mixes together. Instead of that dye being on the top, it's now spread throughout in three dimensions, leaving a very small percentage of dye actually on the surface to go into the disc. This paradox, we've got some blues and reds in there, the red rim. So yeah, um, you just recapture it into the, the chug. You can literally reuse it instantly. Um, it mixes together pretty quickly. It's a great way to save money and dye more discs. Um, this design is kind of a swirl pattern that I recently started doing, um, like a burst swirl. So I'm just laying the, the dye down how I normally do. I'm letting the acetone vapors um, evaporate on their own for just a minute before I use the torch. Probably about good. This is also popping any bubbles that might have risen to the surface. Just very quickly touching them. I don't want to leave it on any one spot too long. Constant movement of the flame is good. So you actually don't burn the glue, which is possible. And for this, I like to go along the seams of the colors and draw them to a central point. Um, when choosing colors, um, I will say it's really important to uh, do a little research. Maybe get a uh, some sort of color wheel or color chart. There's apps that you can get to help learn what colors go well together. Again, a couple bubbles popped up, so I'm just popping those. Now, so I've made a central swirl, or a concentric swirls that end up in the middle, and we're just gonna spider web out. I'm gonna go long and then short, long and then short. This gives it like a really cool like conch shell kind of vibe. In the middle, if it loses a little bit of shape, you can just kind of add a swirl in there. Bring it all back. Again, double check for any sort of bubbles. Good to go. Always, always, always use a magic eraser or wash your discs really well with some sort of mild dish soap, warm water. Everyone has their own tricks. I use a magic eraser. It's pretty much fail safe. Uh, I don't press very hard because you can damage a disc by using it too, too abrasive. I'm just going to center it, start with one edge, press it down lightly, kind of roll the disc into the glue. If it had a corner, start with one corner and then roll all the way to the others. And push it down just a little bit. And there you go. She's ready to go. Um, usually I let them sit at room temperature for 24 hours. For most plastics, if it's 
higher quality plastic like Champion or like Big Z plastic, things like that, I'll do 36 to 48 hours. All right, there you have it. That is my clear glue bed method with the dark wave or the swirl pattern. It's been a ton of fun perfecting this over the past year. I, I just keep pushing it forward and every single one is different and there's always new surprises as I go forward with this. Uh, I'm sure you're all gonna have a great time with it. it. It really can create some effective designs. I wanna leave you all with three little tips or mantras that I live by as I do this. Um, first one, don't get stuck in a box. If you feel like you're getting complacent or your designs are falling flat, your colors just aren't popping, try something new. Do something different. Don't be afraid to get uncomfortable, get funky, and just put yourself out there. Uh, it will pay off and you'll have a lot more fun if you can do that. Second tip would be to look at other forms of artwork. Look at other medium. I get a lot of inspiration from all over the place. I love looking at Classical pieces of artwork, Picasso is a great one to look at. Starry Night by Van Gogh, um, it's you know just huge inspiration for me. I also find a lot of inspiration from things like water bottles in the convenience store. So really just if you open your eyes, open your mind, you're going to find inspiration everywhere you look. And lastly, remember that this is art. Uh, aside from the technical application of the die to the disc, there are no rules. Do whatever you want on those discs. Have a good time. Don't worry about what, what other people think about it. Just put yourself out there and have a great time. I will say that T. Diddy, T. Diddy Army, you guys have been a huge influencer in how far I've been able to take this and I'm really stoked to be able to do it full time. And I have no idea what the future holds, but uh, I don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. So thank you all for, for this opportunity and I look forward to seeing all the work you guys do. Take care. Have a good one. Peace. Boom town. Boom town. Man. Like maybe it was with a little bit more of a low key demeanor than old man Cobbers here usually runs <laughs> usually runs with. But my man Jory brought us right back to Boom Town. Here's here's how I was left feeling after I got done watching all that footage myself like a week or two ago. Yo, I want to go do that right now. <laughs> right now. I hope that all of you came out of it feeling the same way. I can't imagine another response, really. But, man, was that thing just chock full of good information or what? Like, he didn't have to pull the curtain back that far for us. But he did. He did. <laughs> he did. I guess that's the other response to have after watching that master class in making awesome is gratitude i'll speak for myself at least jory like i can't thank you enough for all that you shared with us and in so much detail and like he really does have like one of those bob ross type voices too that just make learning so much easier doesn't he <laughs> doesn't he now if you like i am left feeling grateful after watching jory share all of his secrets which, like, he doesn't only use to make awesome discs with, that he also uses to make his income as well. And you'd like to show your appreciation? I'll make this real easy on you, okay? And not mix any words. Go buy one of his discs for your bag. I guarantee that you'll be happy that you did. I've linked all of his places that are listed on the screen here in the description for you so that the only thing you have to do when I'm done rambling is just go click and then bang, you're there. And like, look, all the likes and shares and all the clicking crap, like it's nice and all, okay? But a couple dollar bills to score yourself a sick piece of plastic is gonna go much further for everyone involved here. Here's what I'm trying to say. Go show my man some T Diddy Army love. Yeah! All right, kiddies, that has us at the end of another visit together. I really hope that you all enjoyed that one as much as I did. That was awesome. The next time uh, that you all see me will probably be for our results video coming up for the Master of Happy Little Accidents disc giveaway. That'll be popping right at the turn of the month. For now, I'm going back 
into my video editing trance to catch up with that big list of things to come that I routed off to you earlier. And then, you know, before signing off, one more huge thank you out to my man Jory from Jory's Fly Dies for all of the time and effort and awesome that he put into that tutorial for all of us. Like, I told you he was a total dude. I told, <laughs> I told you. All right. I'm going to see you guys again before you know it. Until that time comes, you better keep doing it. Hey, hey, everybody. Oh. Heartbreaker! Oh, no. <laughs>